What's up guys? Welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage and welcome back to the Cayman 3.8 turbo build. I know it's been a while since uh, we've posted a video on this engine build, but we were waiting on a bunch of parts to come in, which finally did. Before we jump in and start actually uh, bolting things on here, uh, I'd first like to thank Flat 6 Motorsports. Flat 6 Motorsports uh, has sponsored this build and it just would not be possible had they not stepped up and sponsored it. So a huge thanks to those guys. Uh, Flat 6 Motorsports, I'll post a link uh, in the description below. They offer performance parts for all late model Porsches. So anything 986, 996 and later. So Boxsters, Caymans, 911s, Macans, Cayennes, Panameras, all that stuff. They've got everything you need, so check them out. Secondly, this DVD series by Jake Raby uh, of Flat Six Innovations has been a godsend. I don't think that there's any way that I could have succeeded in getting this short block built without having this. So if you're considering doing this build at home and you don't have prior experience with Flat Six engines, I highly, highly recommend this. With that out of the way, I'm gonna start bolting stuff on here. Uh, basically, we're gonna finish up the front console today and we're gonna get the cylinder heads bolted on. Before I start that, I do wanna show you what I've already done in the oil sump. As you can see, I went ahead and installed the swirl pots. So these are the 996 M96 versions. Um, there are also M97 versions that are a little bit different. Uh, the DVD series goes through all of that. And I installed the pickup tube as well. And then there's also a bracket in there with a rubber grommet that the uh, dipstick slides into from the top of the engine. Now I just need to bolt the sump cover on. I am using a baffled uh, sump plate here to help with oil control as well. Another highly, highly useful thing I got from Jake Raby and the Knowledge Group is this fastener specification book. So you can flip through here and not only does it give you all of the correct torques, but it gives you the fastener sizes as well. So really, really helpful. Uh, and it says that these need to be torqued down to nine and a half foot pounds. And we'll drop the drain plug in to seal this thing up. Next up is the water pump, which uh, obviously replacing with a brand new one. These have plastic impellers, so just be careful as you're handling them. Next, we're gonna install the oil pump. Uh, the oil pump uses these gears to create flow. These are the gears that came with this engine and I don't know if you can see, let me find, the edge of that tooth is kind of rounded off and dented. There were a few issues with these and I just wasn't 100% comfortable using them. There's another one right there. They may have been fine, but I just went ahead and got replacements. On top of replacing the gears, uh, this is the input shaft to the oil pump gears. This is a factory one. Uh, this actually slides in here uh, into the intermediate shaft. This is a replacement from LN Engineering. This is an upgraded material. These have been known, the factory ones, to snap. Uh, so we obviously don't want that to happen and <laughs> wipe out a motor. So I got this as well. I just realized I don't have all the correct fasteners for this, so this is just uh, gonna be a temporary bolt-on. I'll have to go get all the correct fasteners and then torque that down from there. Matter of fact, I just need to order a bunch of M6 by 20s uh, and 25s because I'm using all new hardware, uh, but the kit I bought just doesn't have enough, which means I also probably don't have enough hardware for uh, this, this, or the thermostat housing or uh, coolant outlet down there as well. So for the sake of the video, let's just act like that's all complete. We'll get that all finished up before the next video and I'll show it to you guys. 
Uh, but next, very exciting, we get to finally bolt on the cylinder heads. I'm using standard M96 heads here, uh, no port work or anything like that. With the turbo, if uh, we need more power, we'll just throw an extra pound or two of boost at it. These have been freshly machined. They are ready to go. And for the head gaskets, we're using a Cometic. Uh, these are 40 thou thick to give us the uh, proper compression ratio. Cometic makes a really nice uh, multi-layer gasket, so shouldn't have anything to worry about even with boost. I'm putting these four bolts in first around the chain well and getting those torqued to spec before I do the actual head bolts so that that sealant can do its job. I'm using ARP studs for the heads. Per the instructions from ARP, I'm using their fastener lubricant on the studs and nuts. ARP recommends torquing these in two equal steps to 60 foot-pounds, so I'm going to do 30 first. Time for 60. And lastly, I need to go back and retorque the chain well bolts. And that's that. Bank two cylinder head is on. Now I just need to repeat the process for bank one. I just ran into a really big problem. The parts that came with this engine, not everything matched. Because it came from Motormeister, I think was the name, when the guy went and picked it up, they kind of just we're like, hey, here's all your stuff. No big deal. I mean, we've been able to make it work thus far. But I moved over to the other side of the engine and I started bolting the head on and I looked at it and it's the wrong head. It's for the other side of the engine. There's a right and a left head. Both these heads are right. So now I'm missing a cylinder head. Pretty disappointed right now. <sighs> I was really, really excited about getting all this bolted together, making this video, and being one step closer to being able to get this thing in the car. Probably gonna be a month or so before I can post another video on this engine. Hopefully, someone has just a left cylinder head for sale, and hopefully someone wants to buy just a right cylinder head and hopefully this isn't gonna cost too much money.